So our next step might be to work on some combat, some skills. So first of all, we're going to need some uh, cool looking animations. So I'll import some that I have. Okay, so I've imported some uh, effects now, such as, let's see, got a, um, a fireball effect looking thing. So let's go to RPG only one, go to combat skills, and we're going to make a projectile skill, a area of effect spell, um, an aura, and a restoration skill. So our projectile skills is going to be a fireball skill. I believe we have a fireball icon. And a min cast range will be zero. Max cast range set to 20. So use resource on cast. We don't want to use health when we cast, we want to use mana. Um, and then we can set what it targets. So we'll default that to enemy. How to upgrade it, you buy the player's level, by skill points which you can attain, or by a trait level. Uh, whether or not it applies a buff or debuff whether it always needs a target, if only enemies can use it, and if all classes can use it. And then we have a few prefabs here which we need to create. So our casting prefab is not required. Uh, that's just like a prefab that will appear on the player as they're casting, casting it. Uh, the cast prefab will appear once they actually cast the effect and then the skill prefab is the actual skill prefab that is important. So uh, just to make that more clear, so say the player is firing a fireball they first might charge up the fire in their hands which would be the casting prefab or casting then the cast phase is when they actually do the motion of pushing their hand out and then the skill prefab is obviously the actual fire that emanates from their hands and will then like fly forward towards an enemy so let's generate our skill prefab uh, and all we need to do is take our effect of our fireball and put it as a child now um we don't actually want any scripts which will um, remove the uh, effect, we will remove it ourselves and that circle there is our hitbox so we kind of just want to make sure the fire itself is in there now this fire effect um, actually moves one way to easily change that is just to make the uh, speed zero and that way it won't move However, that might then lose the effect that you want from it. So you, you kind of have to play around with um, how you're going to make that work. Now obviously you can rename these things. So you might want to rename that to Fireball Skill Prefab. But just make sure to then reassign it so you don't get errors. Um, you can add some sounds. Sounds for when the projectile is traveling, when you're casting, when it hits something. Um, but we're gonna go into our rank details now. So essentially, your skill can have multiple ranks which you can level up with, as we said, uh, player level, skill points, or trait level. In this case, it's gonna be skill points. So we'll add two ranks. So the first rank will need 100 points to level up. And uh, we need, let's say, 25 mana to cast this. And there's a cooldown time of three seconds. Take zero seconds. Um, actually, let's say it takes one second. No, it takes zero seconds to cast. Cast instantly, and it does fifty to one hundred damage. However, we might want it to do fire damage. So, if you want to implement that real quick, you can go to combat options, go to damage definitions, add a new damage type. Let's say fire damage, and you can set a color for it as well. And if you then have a uh, floating damage enabled, floating combat text, uh, that will be colored based on that color you set there. So we can go back to our fireball skill and instead of doing physical damage, we can have it do fire damage. We'll do it 25 to 50 and do zero physical. Now, um, in a later video, uh, we covered, in another video we covered uh, how to handle combat damage taken and combat damage dealt. So obviously, you can use fire damage there and uh, resist to it if you have fire defense, etc. But we're not going to cover that in this. Um, you also want to set the projectile speed, so let's set that to maybe 10. How long you can fly for, maximum, we'll say 3. 
and then we'll just leave the rest. You can also do some extra stuff like apply damage over time on hit, whether it procs and knocks uh, your target back, whether it runs events. We'll have the proc actually, that would be cool, uh, the knockback effect. And you can also customize the uh, tooltip. So, basic example is if I make this a bit bigger. Um, you have your source and your preview. So, the preview is what you're going to see in game. So, it's, uh, deals fire damage in a fireball. But you might not want it to show like that. You might want that to be italic. So, you can do uh, some formatting. And that can be your description. Maybe above you have how much damage it deals. So, you say it deals uh, 25 to 50 damage. And then make the 25 to 50 red. Like so. Maybe don't want damage there. Uh, but you also might want to do something more interesting, like base it off how much uh, strength you have. So you can see here it says attribute underscore attribute name. Uh, close curly bracket. So if you do curly bracket attribute underscore endurance, you see there it says val, which means the value of that that character's endurance. Um, but we're not going to cover this in this, but we could say, for example, plus um, that much damage. So actually, you can take that there and put it there. Maybe even put that in brackets. So for example, if your endurance was 50, you could say it does an extra 50 damage. And you know what, we'll, we'll quickly cover it. So if we open our custom damage scaling window, we can go to our min fire damage, max fire damage, and say add int value. Um, how does this work? And we're going to add to our no chains integer value. Oh, sorry, that's the target. And we want to add our attackers endurance. So that is an attribute. Um, So we want attribute total, our combatant is our attacker, dealing the uh, damage, the attribute is endurance, and we can add that value to both um, our min fire damage and our max fire damage. So if our combatant's endurance is 50, we'll add an additional 50 damage to that firewall's fire damage. And we could test that out in game, but that will work. And that's how we will look in game. And obviously, if you want to use base damage or skill only attributes, skill only being um only attributes you gain from like auras, for example, then you can do that as well. Or underscore equip for attributes you gain from equipped items, etc. Which is all explained here. Okay. And then finally, we need to set up our animations. So let's make this a bit smaller again. So we're gonna go to our player. Because we need to look at the uh, animation controller. And then we can go back to our skill. Fireball. And it says we need a cast animation and a casting animation for our RPG mechanism character, which is represented by this character here. So first we'll ask for a skill animation set. So if you go over here, we can see we have our skill animations and we have four different skill sets. Now these are just made to make it easier to organize your skills. 
Uh, so we're going to use um, skill set one. Which we will set here. And we want to use animation zero. And for our cast and animation, we can use animation one. So our cast animation is going to be this. I'm just going to use a punch. And our cast and animation, we can use. We'll use a stunned animation just for the sake of this example. And that should now work correctly. But we'll obviously test it just to make sure everything is fine. So if you run our intro scene, we don't need to save uh, that scene. Okay, so we've got some errors here. So that is most likely caused by our scripts here. Button. See, there it is. So we want to just delete that. We don't need the scripts from our um, particle system. Just double check if there's any other ones. Nope. And that should clear up, clear up that error. Okay, so let's hit play. Okay, so if we look in our skill window now, we have our fireball there. But um, most likely, we could get some issues trying to actually use it. But no, we don't. There we go. Simple. So that's our fireball skill. Like so. Uh, because we did set the uh, casting time to zero, that is why we're not actually seeing that stunned animation. Uh, if we go back to the main menu and make some changes though Then we can actually see that cast in animation. So we say uh, total cast time is 2 of which time is casting is 2 and Now if we try and use that we'll see we spend two seconds in the stunned um, Animation there we are before you then throws it out 